Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So today we are doing a short project on Microsoft Excel and you can call it as a mini project as well. The basic idea behind this project is to give you a holistic understanding of how you work with a report and help you work with a disorganized Excel data set and convert it into a well-structured report. Another objective is for you to get the fundamentals clear before you move on to further advanced topics. The way we will solve this project is by answering 15 questions in total and we'll do this step by step together. What I'll also do is leave the link to all the questions in the description and also the playlist to all the videos that I have done in the past so that you can refer to them in case you need to go and deep dive into individual videos. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. These are the questions that are here. So I have a total of 15 questions for you. We'll answer them one by one. Before this, let's look at the data set that we have in place. This is the sample data set that I was talking about and we'll try to work with this data set and answer some of the interesting questions that come up. Let's move on to the very first question. The very first question is convert rows into columns and columns into rows. We'll go back to our data set. So in order to do that, all you have to do is select the data set. You can manually select it or you can just place your cursor somewhere in the data set and press Ctrl A which selects the entire data. Now you can just copy it, Control C and place your cursor somewhere on the Excel sheet. Right click and an option comes up under paste options that is transpose with a T in bracket. So you can now click T or you can just press your mouse and now you will notice your columns, the, the green ones, the headers are now converted into rows. And your rows, let's say employee IDs here, are now converted into columns. So there you go. You have successfully answered your very first question. I'll just go ahead and delete this since we don't need this anymore. All right. So this is now the data set that we will work with. And it looks much clearer now since the headers are on top as rows and your data is in column fashion. Okay. So good job. You have answered the first question successfully. Moving on to the second question, give red background to the ID header and apply the same formatting to other headings as well. So what we have to do is, this is our ID header. Let me just enlarge this if you are not able to see, yes. So this is our ID header. The question is to give a, give a ba red background to this. So we'll select the ID header, go to fill color and I'm going to select a red background. So I've done this. Now the rest of the question is and apply the same formatting to the other headings as well. So this is where your format painter comes into picture. All you have to do is select the cell from which you want to copy the formatting. Go to format painter under the home tab. Just click on format painter and go ahead and select all the other cells where you want to apply the formatting. And I'll now leave my mouse and there you go. Let me just make it a little more clear. Yes. So now you have your headers in the same formatting by the help of Format Painter. So we have answered the second question as well successfully. Moving on to the third question. Move the higher year column after the address column. So we have a higher year column here and we have an address column here. Now the question is to move the higher year column that is column G after column K which is the address column. So in order to move a column we have uh, seen this in one of the previous videos and don't worry uh, all these questions have already been answered in detail in the previous videos. I will leave the link to each of the videos in the description and I have also created a playlist for the same. So you don't have to worry about that but for the for the matter of this particular video I will help you answer each of these questions individually. All right. So in order to move, what we do is there are multiple methods. I'll just show you one method here. 
Select the column. I have selected the column G. On your keyboard, press the Shift key. Once you press the Shift key and move to the edge of your column, you will see the icon changing. Click on your mouse and just drag your mouse to the right of wherever you want the column to be. So you see a dark green line appearing here. I'll just leave it here. And there you go. So higher year has been moved from here to the end of the document. All right. So we have answered our third question as well. Let's move on to the fourth question. The first, fourth question is, make the employee address clearly visible using wrap text. So you will notice in the address column, we have address for a few employees. But this is kind of, you know, uh, cut short, right? It is not fully visible to you right now. So one way is you can either, you know, elongate your address column. You can see the entire address that way. But sometimes, you know, you, you may have data even in column L, M, N, and, you know, so, so much data ahead. So in those cases, we have an option to use the wrap text feature. So the wrap te text basically showcases the entire contents of the cell right in the sheet without changing its column width. Okay, so it will change the row width. Let me show you how. So we'll select all the, all the addresses or you can just basically select all the addresses here. Under home tab, go to wrap text, click on wrap text and there you go. Now you can see the entire address is visible in one go without you having to elongate the row or column. All right. So this is another way you can view the data. Let me just uh, resize this so that we have enough space on our sheet. All right. So we have answered our uh, fourth question as well. Let's move on to our fifth question, which is create a common heading above the current column headers. So it is asking us to create a common heading. So we have heading for each of the columns, but we want a common heading. So as I already told you, this data is an employee data set. So we will name it employee data. For that, first you have to insert a row right above your header cell. To do that, right click here and click on insert. Now you have a new row. What I'll do is I'll just type in the title, employee data. You will notice one thing that employee data is in cell A1. Cell B1, C1 and all are empty, right? But we want to align this at the center of our data set. So in order to do that, we have something called as merge, M-E-R-G-E. So I'll select this data along with the empty cells on the right. And I'll go to merge and center under the home tab. I'll click on it. And there you go. This entire cell has become, the entire set of cells have, has become one. And now it is called A1. Okay. Let me just uh, change the size a little. Make it a little bold. And I just want to give it a color, let's say. Yeah, yellow. So I've formatted this now. And this is how you use merge and center. If you don't want to center it, you can, you know, you can use merge across as well. So merge across basically uh, lets you, you know, merge different cells across your sheet. All right. And uh, just for the sake of it, let me just align our data to the center using the alignment options. Okay, so this looks good. If you want to beautify it, you can also give it a cool border like this. So congratulations, you have successfully answered the first five questions. Let's move on to the next set. So the sixth question is highlight salaries that are higher than one lakh dollars with light green color. All right. So we have salaries in annual salary. What we have to do is we have to highlight the salaries that are greater than 1 lakh with light green colors. So in order to do that, we have seen in the past, what you have to do is select the data. Under home tab, go to conditional formatting, click on highlight cell rules and you have to select the greater than option. And once you select the greater than option, 
I want salaries that are greater than 1 lakh and I want to highlight it with a green fill. All right, click on OK and there you go. So all your salaries which are above 1 lakh have been highlighted in green color. Successfully answered sixth question as well. Moving on to the seventh question. Highlight the five youngest ones with light red color. That is highlight the five youngest ages with light red color. So let's go to age. Similarly, we'll select the data, go to conditional formatting, and then we'll go to top bottom rules. Under top bottom rules, we have to highlight the five youngest ones. That means the lowest ages or you can call it the bottom most ages, right? So I'll select bottom 10 items. And here I just want to highlight the five youngest ages. So I'll select five here with a light red fill. Click on OK. And there you go. So 26, 30, 29, 25, and 27 are the youngest ages amongst this group. All right. So we have answered the seventh question as well. Let's move on. To the eighth one which is freeze both the header rows so you have two header rows here row one and row two we want to freeze both of them so that when we scroll down we can still see the headers right now we are not able to see it so what i'll do is i'll keep my i'll select row number three because everything above that needs to be frozen so i'll select row number three go to the view tab Go to view under view you can come to freeze panes and under freeze panes select freeze panes all right so you've selected that now let's see if this works i'm scrolling down and there you go so your row number one and two are frozen while you can scroll through the rest of the rows so good job there you have solved eight questions successfully Ninth question is using the quickest way calculate the total sum of annual salaries. So we have annual salaries here. We want to calculate the total sum. Now obviously if you use the sum formula or if you try to use the plus operator, you, it will take you some time. You will have to do it in let's say three to four clicks. But there is a very short formula, very simple formula using which you can do addition the fastest way in Excel that is auto sum now auto sum is present at two places one is under the home tab you can see auto sum here and another one is under the formulas tab and here you go so all you have to do is you don't even have to select the data the uh, the excel automatically figures out where the data is all you have to do is place your cursor wherever wherever you want the auto sum so i have placed it here right below the auto sum, the annual salary column. I'll click on auto sum. And there you go. The formula is applied. The range is already selected and just click on enter. And there is your total sum in the quickest manner possible. So that was your question number nine, quickest way to calculate the total sum. Okay. All right. Question number 10, add a serial number column and autofill values in it for all employees okay so we are asked to add a serial number column that is a new column and we have to autofill the values for all the employees so what i'll do is we already have an id column here so let me just insert a new column before id column so you do a right click click on insert this inserts a new column for you and i'll say serial number okay and i'm going to say one and two here now notice one thing i'm not saying three four five one by one i have an option to autofill this data how i'll select one and two and you see a small let me just enlarge this you see a small uh, green dot here so when you keep your cursor right above it it will become uh, as a plus symbol Okay, now let me just go back to the same old size. Okay, now all you have to do is you can just drag it to the bottom. That is one way 
or what you can do is just double click on this dark green dot and this will autofill the entire list of serial numbers for you and not only for serial numbers it works for any set of numbers or patterns that you can that you work with excel all right so this is just an example for you you can check out the actual video on autosum i'll leave the link to those and other videos as well in the description now in order to do some formatting here uh, we can just use format painter i'll use format painter change it to the way it was and the employee data needs to be here as well so let me just merge it again all right and let me just give it a quick bordering as well cool so we have successfully solved the first 10 questions let's move on to question number 11 that is separate country and city into, into individual columns now these are some of the intermediate uh, uh, you know questions that are in excel so we'll make use of we look up table tables as well but don't worry these are pretty basic uh, pretty straightforward and gives you a good understanding of how each of these uh, each of these functions or features work in excel so question number 11 is separate country and city into individual columns so we have a, a column called country comma city so you have your country separated by the uh, city with a comma so india mumbai chennai etc all right so let's see how we can do that so we have to separate these so in order to separate these what i'll do before that is i'll just put in a new column here now the reason why i'm doing this is when you try to separate data like this it will spill over to the other column and you know your data in address column will be lost so we don't want that that's the reason we are creating a new column and we want to insert i mean we basically want usa uh, india and china to appear here and the city name that is seattle bangalore, bangalore mumbai and all to appear in this particular column so in order to do that all you have to do is just select your data yeah so the separator here is here is a comma all right select your data go to the data tab click on text to columns now once you click on text to columns all you have to do is click on delimited since you are using a delimiter or a separator that is your comma click on next select comma i have already selected this all right now you will see a preview here which says country will be like this city will be like this click on next you don't have to make any changes here click on finish and it says there is already data here do you want to replace it it's basically telling you that uh, there is a column k and you know there could be data here so it's just warning you to check it i can check that there is no data here in the next column so i'm okay and there you go so now country and city are separated into two different columns all right so this is how we have separated the, the data for ourselves so that it's easy for us to makes sense out of it all right cool so let's move on to the next question which is a, a direct question that is how many male employees received more than 15 percent bonus now there are multiple ways you can find this you can use a pivot table you can use probably a vlookup or you know you can make use of other features as well but we'll make use of the count if formula that is count ifs count ifs formula to find this out that is how many male employees received more than 15 percent bonus so basically there are two conditions here so to say uh, so we have to find male employees with greater than 15 percent bonus correct this is what we have to find out all right so in order to do this let me use a use the count ifs formula that is type in the formula with an equal to type in count ifs okay press the tab key that will auto complete it for you and now the first one you have to enter is a criteria so what is the first criteria that the employee should be a male employee okay the first criteria is 
from this range that is the gender range is our criteria range and the criteria itself is the employee should be male i'm using uh, double quotes because uh, it's a text character you put a comma again and type in your next criteria so what is your next criteria somebody with a 15 percent or higher bonus that is this is the criteria range for you and the criteria is greater than 15 percent just notice one thing that we are saying greater than we don't want to include anything that is 15 percent if you want to include anything you can do a greater than or equal to but in this case we just want greater than 15 percent and go ahead and close the bracket so you have you have two conditions here and two criterias okay press enter and you receive three three is the answer here let's see if uh, it's right or wrong let's see so what i'll do is in order to check this is let me just apply a filter here and i'll filter out all the male employees okay and I'll filter out everyone who has more than 15% of salary. So there you go. So three employees, Arvind, Ravindra and George. These are the three employees who have more than 15% bonus and who are male employees. All right. Let me just clear the filter. And there you go. So our answer is correct. Let's go back to the next question. Question number 13. That is using VLOOKUP, find department and hire year of three employees so we can take three employees here i'm going to uh, you know randomly take three employees so employee number this this and this so i've taken three employees what we have to find out is the department and the higher year of each of these employees now we look up is very important when you are you know looking up data in a in a row by row fashion so in this case uh, we want to find out the department and then the higher year so in order to do that you can use the vlookup formula just type in v equals vlookup okay the first one you want to find out is the lookup value so the lookup value is the actual id all right comma next is your table array so start with the id column since that is your uh, primary identifier I'll start with the ID column and I'll go up to the department column since department is what we want to find out and I'll select the entire range of uh, data. All right. Just notice one thing that at the corner of the selection, it says 17 R cross 4 C that is 17 rows are selected and four columns are selected. So 4 C basically four will become your column number. Just remember that okay now put in a comma and then it asks for a column index number so as i said four is the column index number since one two three four department comes in as the fourth column comma and it will ask you for an approximate match match or exact match so in majority of the cases we will go with exact match which is false you can type in false here or you can just put in a zero so for zero stands for false and one stands for true that's why we are using a zero here close your bracket and enter and there you go so e02832 that is e02832 is in the it department which is correct and i'll just auto fill it by doing a double click all right so finance and marketing for the other employees similarly you can find out higher year do a vlookup we look up with the id comma I'll select data from ID till higher year, select the entire data and now you can notice my column number is 12, 12 is listed there, comma 0 and there you go. So higher year is right in front of you. Amazing. So you have, you, you have used VLOOKUP to find out data from the table and you know specific information for specific IDs. Now the 14th question is using a pivot table, find the average age of female employees in each department. 
So let's first create a pivot table. So what you can do is just keep your uh, cursor somewhere in the data. Go to insert tab and click on pivot table and a sh short pop-up appears for you. It will uh, tell you what is the range selected. So the range is correct, A2 to, all right. So I, I may have to change the range because it is all also selecting my auto sum calculation in row number 90, which I don't want to appear, right? So let me just uh, remove everything and just select the data. So I have just selected the data and where do I want the Excel sheet? I want it, uh, where do I want the pivot table? I want it in a new worksheet. All right, I'll click on OK. So I have my pivot table fields ready. Now let me just create the pivot table. So what if the what is the question again? Find the average age of female employees in each department. So obviously we will need the department. So I'll just put departments in rows. So you can see all the departments as a rows. Next thing is we want to find out uh, the average age. So age is what we are calculating. So that will come under values. Now this is giving us sum of age. We will change that, don't worry. And we want it only for female employees. So let us let me take the gender and let me put it under filters because we will remove male employees and just keep female employees. In order, if you need a checkbox here, just select this and the checkbox will appear. So I just need female employees, click on OK. And this gives you a sum. We don't want the sum. What we want is the average. So to do that, there is a small drop down button. If you see, click on it and then click on value field settings. Once you do that, there is an option here where you can change it to average. So it's by default selected as sum, change it to average, click on OK. And there you have it. So you have female employees for each, for each uh, department their average age. You can change this row label as per your requirement. I've changed it to department. So this gives us a pretty good idea in terms of what the calculation is in just a few clicks. We didn't have to do any manual calculation here. So just by using pivot table, we calculated what was the average age of female employees in each department. And you can also see a grand total here if you don't want these grand totals to appear, just go to design, click on uh, click on uh, grand totals and click on off for rows and columns. And there you go, your grand total is off. All right, there you go. So the very last question, we are coming to the end of the video now. The very last question is export the file into a PDF version. Let me just go back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this file that is this sheet and I'm going to convert it into a PDF version. So there are two to three methods, three methods to be exact, uh, you know, for a simple conversion of Excel into PDFs. But I'm just going to show you one method. You can uh, look at my previous videos to find out the detailed videos on how to convert Excel to PDF versions. All you have to do is just go to file, click on print or what you can do is just press Ctrl P on your keyboard. All right. And this is how it will appear. So you have an op option under printer which says print to PDF, Microsoft print to PDF. Let it be selected. And we are printing the active sheet. Yes, so this is what we are going to print. And it says there will be two sheets. So that's fine. What we can also do here is you can under no scale, you, you can say, Fill, fit all columns on one page. Now you can see there is only one page here and everything is fitted into the same page. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on print. Once you click on print, it will give you an option to save it somewhere. I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to say PDF version of my mini project. Click on save and notice the save as type as PDF. Click on save and my Excel sheet has been saved as a PDF version. The PDF version, yes. There you go. So this is how 
your PDF will look like. All right. Awesome. So those are those were the uh, total 15 questions that we have solved today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And if there are any comments, please post it on the comments tab. And what I would also like you to do is uh, try to solve this uh, project on your own. Maybe go through the video once and then take the sample data set and try to solve each question on your own. And if you are able to successfully do it, uh, please post your comments if you enjoyed it. And if you uh, need me to do another set of Excel projects or short Excel projects like these, let me know in the comments tab. So thank you again for watching the entire video and have a great day. See you with another video next week. Thank you.